Holy Spirit upon us for evangelism. Acts 1 8 says you will receive the power as the Spirit of God will come upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. So we see that Mordecai takes Esther when she's an orphan. He takes her when she is a captive, watches over her. This leads her to meeting the king. She becomes a princess. She becomes a queen. We also see that he checks on her, reveals her secrets about the king and he also tells her what to say, what not to say. But this is not where the story ends. Actually the whole book of Esther and the whole story of Esther is about this. It's not about a peasant becoming a queen. It's not about an orphan becoming a wife of a king. It's about her leveraging her influence for the cause of God's purposes. And we see that Holy Spirit also does the same thing. Mordecai, he was in both worlds. He was in the world that Esther was in and he was in the world where Esther was from. Mordecai was in the both worlds. He was in the world that Esther was in. He was in the palace. He was also fully acquainted with the world Esther was from. And in the world Esther was from, there was a hidden agenda. That world was already suffering. They were already captives. They were already not in their own country. But now against this world, there was a verdict. There was a law. There was an enemy who was not only seeking to make them slaves and make their life miserable, but seeking actually, physically, brutally to remove them out of the earth. And Mordecai knew that. It's interesting that Esther wasn't aware of it. Esther lived very beautifully, but she was not aware of the future of the people she used to be like until Mordecai brought some enlightenment. And he says, listen girl, I know your life is very comfortable, your life is very great, but there are people who you used to be like and these people right now, not only their life is bad, that's bad enough, but not only that, but there's something else happening that you need to be aware of. They are going to die. And the Holy Spirit comes upon us for ministry. Why? Because the people around us today who do not know Jesus Christ are not going to go to heaven. Not because they're bad, but because their sins were not paid for by Jesus Christ. And we're not going to heaven because we're good. We're going to heaven because Jesus Christ paid for our sin and nobody is righteous, not one. The Holy Spirit, it knows the future. The Holy Spirit sees eternity because He was there and He is there. The Holy Spirit knows about hell and the Holy Spirit knows about heaven. And so you can see the Holy Spirit lives in me right now and He sees the joy and the things that God is doing through the Holy Spirit in me and He also sees the people whom God loves as much as He loves me and as He loves you and He sees their future and He grieves about it. So he, then He comes to us and He says, let's go up a little bit higher. Let's do something about it. When Jesus was on this earth, he mentioned about hell quite a few times. The Bible has few words about hell. One is Hades, which is the abode of the dead. It means that's where happens when people die. But the word that Jesus used to describe hell was Gehenna or Gehenna. And it was actually a word they used for a cosmic garbage dump outside of Jerusalem. What they would do is when criminals would die, or you have a dog that died or a cat that died or uh, you had garbage, what you would do is you would bring and throw it on the dump. Um, dogs would go at night and and growl there and literally you could hear those like almost like cries and gnash their teeth looking for some meat. There will be worms because of so much just garbage there. There will be worms there. It was one of the nastiest, smelliest place in the whole Jerusalem because it was outside. So when Jesus who was in heaven and came on this earth and if anybody knew what hell is like, 
it's not the guy in Hollywood who writes songs about it. That they'll play poker there, have orgies, have sex, beer, and, and have all the fun. Those guys have never been there. Jesus was there when it was made. And he says, if I am going to use an analogy to describe what this place is like. It's kind of like this cosmic garbage dump that we have in Jerusalem where all the things that are bad are going there. People will gnash their teeth there. They will be warm. They won't die. And he says it will smell so bad because it will be sulfur. There will be fire there. And Jesus says it will be like a bottomless pit. When it's like the further it, the time goes, that means you're falling further and further and you're never really touching the bottom. You're going further and further from God. And then Jesus says that there will be actually physical fire. So anytime Jesus describes this place, I'm going to pay attention because he's talking about something he has seen. I'm not going to listen to something about someone who wants hell to be like that. And Jesus describes that. And he says it's so bad that the Father thought it will be worth it to have me take on this human flesh, become like you guys walk with you on these dirty streets and have you people put me on your cross mock me make fun of me pull my beard beat me with rods until the thorns go into my skull and have my heart explode out of the amount of pain and I will die so that as many people as possible can avoid go into that place. The Holy Spirit knows about this. We don't. We are in a palace. Our life is comfortable as Christians. But Holy Spirit knows not only how miserable people are without God, He knows where they're headed without God. And what He does is He comes and He begins to challenge you and me like He challenged Esther. He said, Esther, Esther, 